Since 2008, there has been one website, www.polpolitikin.com, on top of the music business, behind the scenes, and on the front line. Chris Porter, a.k.a. Pole Politikin. Mr. Porter has worked with everybody, Universal Motown Records, Young Money, Rockefeller Records, and more. Pole Politikin is a conscious brand that aligns with artists, businesses, and brands to get more exposure. What are you waiting for? It's time to open your mind to the other side of the music business. Log on to www.popolitikin.com. That's www.popolitikin.com. Call 760-717-5803 for your interview. That number again is 760-717-5803. Welcome back to Poe Politicking. Now Politicking with the homie Steven Darnell. How you doing, bro? What up, bro? How you doing, man? Living life, chilling. All right. So as an icebreaker, first thing we want to talk about, give us three interesting facts about you. Uh, number one, got a little boy on the way. December 10th, that's the due date. My first son. I got a little daughter now. So I'm pretty excited to be having a son. You know, having a little version of me that I get to cultivate and bring up. Uh, number two, from Alabama, born and raised in Alabama. You know, that that whole Southern hip-hop music is just in my veins. Uh, number three, man, I have a crazy sweet tooth. I like sweets, man. It's mostly pastries like Kate, Lil' Debbie. You know, it might not be a good thing, too. Yeah, I'm going to say, how long you been a diabetic? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I haven't gotten there yet. It definitely runs in my family. You gotta chill out. So it has definitely caused me a lot of cavities and, and trips to the to the dentist. And you know, my my family members and friends they make fun of they make fun of me about it all the time. But um, I don't know. It's like you know, late night cravings, eleven, twelve a.m. Man, you gotta have some sweet. It's just I just if you see my cabinets in the refrigerator, it's just stocked up with a whole bunch of. Might not be good for my figure, you know, but I'm working on it. Bro. I think so. What's what's the what's the go to uh, snack? Nah, man, sure. It just all depends on what's next close by. Like I would say, a lot of people don't probably don't know about this, but uh, <laughs> like Little Debbie, like fudge. It's called fudge rounds, like, <laughs> and it's like this chocolate. It's like this little chocolate cake with like you know. Uh, chocolate swirls on it, and uh, zebra cakes, and I love them oatmeal pies. See, this is the thing, though, bro. Like, we had a, where I'm from, we had a candy lady. We call it candy lady up the street. She she sold these individually. So this this addiction started when I was like a kid, and I, I could never shake it. And to this day, I go in the store, any gas station, any convenience store, and I go right to the little Debbie uh, rack. And it's like fifty cents. <laughs> Bear like three and man, it's hard, bro. I need to go to rehab, bro. <laughs> All right. So, like you said, you're from Alabama. So talk yeah. about your background a little bit, how you got involved with music, what made you fall in love with it, all that good stuff. Yeah. Man, bro, like true truthfully, like I always just been, you know, just infatuated with hip hop. You know, just the swag of it all. The language, the, the 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 beats, the lyrics, everything, everything that comes around hip hop, I felt like it was just resonating, you know, all all in my heart. I didn't really pursue it early on, like you know, I wasn't like no a kid, the kid who was you know rocking around in my high school selling CDs or anything like that because that my perception of the hip hop image, I felt like I didn't, I didn't really fit the mold of what it looked like, especially where I was coming from. You know, around the time I was growing up, it was like the image of a, of a, of a hip hop star was real gangster, like you know, you got to be moving weight and you know, just hard, hard, grimy cat. And a lot of cats wasn't really open up about their emotional struggles or just just certain struggles in life. I feel like a lot of artists like, you know, probably Kanye West and Andre 3000 and, you know, people like that, just name a few, kind of open that door, open that lane up for cats like me. 
Um, but, you know, just living and growing up in Montgomery, Alabama, and the cars, man, the box Chevys, rims, jewelry, and just that whole flash, I feel like, you know, that's pretty much where my first name came from, just being a Southern artist and taking that swag and applying it to my music. It's just, you know, I, was, I just gravitated towards it. So name your playlist right now, like what you got in your playlist playing right now. Yo, know, it's crazy because I won't say I have like an exact playlist, but I do have like go to music, you know, definitely a J. Cole's, Kendrick Lamar's. I, I listen to a lot of my friends. It's a guy, Cartez Marcel, pretty dope artist. Let's see who Lecrae, listen to him from time to time. Uh, T.I. Man, just not, man, you know, I go back and forth, like, you know, it's really who I'm listening to. I listen to, I want to be honest and say, I listen to a lot of my own stuff just to critique myself and seeing, you know, uh, ways I can improve or, or stuff I could do better. Like, I listen to a song and, like, man, you know, I, I should say this like this or, dang, I need to, I need to start switching up the flow or, or take on this flow pattern and doing this song, you know what I mean? And that's a lot of stuff I just pretty much learned over the over the years. But I'm still a fan of the like old school. Like I still like anything in the '90s. I still play to this day. Nas, you know, Red Man, Method Man, still still bumping them. DMX, Drag On, like that whole little Rough Riders movement. Like I still play this music to this day. I I play this music as if it just came out. And that's how you know I look at it because I feel like if I want to be the best, if I want to grow as an artist, then I have to study the people who I feel was basically like the golden era, like who did it at its highest, and not just look at it it's like oh man I'm about to go and put in some old Tupac, some old Biggie and Ride. I look at Tupac's records and Biggie's records, and I put them in as if they new, they are new releases. Mm-hmm. You, know, you understand? Um, a lot of UGK. I was just listening to Ride, Ride and Dirty, Highlight, Diamonds and Wood. Hey, so but but so you consider yourself like a gospel rapper, right? Yeah, I don't know well, UGK. Like I can't even ride, play UGK sometimes. They like very vulgar. So how you? I, but I look at it like this, man. You know that whole term, gospel rap, Christian rap, even the term gangster rap. Any any term. That people will take and place in front of rap. I feel like it all started and all stemmed basically from a business aspect. Mm-hmm. It was the people who were basically in charge of running record labels or, you know, in charge of marketing and everything. They had to find a way Maybe. to yeah. corner each market. Mm-hmm. You know, right. to me as a rapper, as an artist, I don't. I mean, a lot of people don't know that. Michelangelo was a Christian. He never called himself, hey, I'm a Christian painter. I'm going to paint the 16th chapel. You know what I mean? Because this is what I see like as a Christian. Like He probably wouldn't have known that, but he was just a painter. And his his religious beliefs, that just basically was a part of his lifestyle. That's who he, he was. So it came out through his art. I don't have to run around and say, man, you know, I'm, I'm a Christian rapper. I'm a gospel rapper. Because I feel like I am trying to push the agenda to people like, hey, this is what I'm doing. And if you like this, then, you know. All yeah. right. So right there. So who do you make your music for? I make my music for the have-nots, for the outcasts, for the downtrodden people like myself. I grew up, man, I grew up like dirt poor, like the situation, the housing, the clothing, the the, 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 econ- the social economic uh, status that I grew up in was hor- like was horrible to me. I-, I wasn't the cool kid that that fit in with everybody. You know, it kind of got to the point where I relished in the fact of being the underdog. You know, if I made the basketball team, I wasn't getting mad minutes. You know, actually, you know, Coach Wood, I would sit at the end of the bench. You know, I grew up with people kind of down me in every single area of my life. 
you know, the kid, that kid that's getting bullied right now. Like, you know, I, I was in that, that situation. Don't mean that people bullied me and I just folded up. Like, I fought back. <laughs> you know, I ain't no fault, man. <laughs> we ain't lose a draw now. You know, I was going to try to hold my own. But I'm just trying to say that that type of energy gravitated itself towards me. So now when I make music, I make that with that music within my heart for that kid that got to go to school. Like, oh, man, these shoes, man, they're going to talk about me when I, when I sit in class. Or now I got to strategically plan my day to not cross the path of certain people. So I take that that same energy and I apply it to music because I know that, you know, I feel like I can spit. You know, I, I spit until the sun come up. But I know the game I'm in, like, some people, they don't look at me. They might not look at me as being, having the potential of being a Michael Jordan in, in terms of rap. You know what I mean? I'm the underdog. So when I make music, I make music for that kid that's, you know, struggling to, to get them loans so they can go to school. Or that brother, man, who just want to be an entrepreneur, like, you know, walking up to the, to the, to the barbershop with... CDs or posted up outside the gas station, bro. We we in the same group, but if you want to encompass that into how I view Christ, I view Christ in that in that same vein. He was for those same people: the tax collector, you know, the prostitute, the stripper, the drug dealer. Like those are the people he came for. And I I really honestly I really don't I I have nothing against well well to do people and people who are doing their thing. Like I applaud you. But now I gotta look at that kid who, who hadn't had a, a a meal, you know what I'm saying, in like almost two days. So I'm I'm looking out for them. Like that's a, that's what I think about. I mean, I think I'm like, yo, man, bro, you got a dream. You just got to. You got a dream, and you got to dream hard. You know what I'm saying? So that's just how I feel when I make music. I'm gonna say. So what do you say? Like I know you were saying like. The rich, but like, what about okay? Some of the rich, they're rich because they figured out how to really connect to God. Because I was talking to my wife about this, and I was saying I don't think God wants you to be poor. God wants you to have as much as He wants sure. you to have. And I think some people just figured out how to get that and connect with that, and that's why they have it. I, I definitely know. I know for a fact that that God don't want you to be poor. But at this, at the same time, it's like. If we talking just if we talking just about financially, then I'm just gonna speak on speak on it from a financial standpoint. Like there there are biblical principles on how to manage your funds. Yeah, if I if you give me a check for a thousand dollars and I go out and <laughs> and buy clothes and shoes for eight hundred, now I got two hundred. Knowing my bills is four hundred plus. You know that wasn't. A wise financial decision. So I'll say, you know, be be faithful of a few, and God will bless you with much, basically. So there's a lot of people, you know, that want to be millionaires, but they they can't handle a hundred dollars or two hundred dollars. They don't know how to. They can't manage that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So you can say, it, there are people out there who have um, figured out a way to to really. Some people are just really good at managing money, man, you know? And some people really struggle in that area. Yeah, Those I people. think I think one thing about, like, uh, finance with people, because I think somebody, like, they be found in the Bible, and it's like the root of money is all evil. So that, like, messed you up from the jump when you're thinking like that. Like, if you think like that your whole life, you ain't going to never have no money. But that's the thing. People people mess that verse up every single time. It didn't say, the, it didn't say money was the root of all evil. It says the love of money is the root of all evil. Right. Because you think about somebody who is so determined to get money that nothing else matters. Truth be told, man, they're willing to step on anybody. Well, they sell their soul. If you think about it, you got people be doing some strange things for some change, man. They'll do anything for money. So some people, it's sad man. when you really think about it. It, it. And you know, and that's the thing I want to say, like, yo, I want I want to be financially um, set. You know, I have a family to think about, and I really want them to, to live a comfortable life. I just I don't want to get to the point where it just rules my every thought. 
You know what I mean? Oh, was, so cash don't rule everything around you then? It don't? <laughs> Cream? Get the money, dollar, okay. dollar bill, y'all? You know, I have got to the point where cash doesn't rule everything around me. Yeah. Now, does cash help a lot of situations in my life? Do I feel like as, as an artist, I would be a lot further along in some situations if I had the finances? Yeah, I do feel like that because, you know, it's hard trying to be an artist and make the best quality product given the budget right. at hand. Because everybody you come in contact with, whether it be top-notch videographer, top-notch photographer, top-notch studio producers, graphics, everybody charges. And when you want top-notch product, they're going to come with top-notch prices. Right. You know what I mean? That's why I can say, if you can look at a trapper rapper or, you know, the trap rap, whatever they may call it, at the end of the day, we know that these guys have funds where their funds is coming from. And they've amassed, <laughs> they've amassed big amounts of money. So how can you, like, okay, you look at the trap world. Like, how is this guy on? We know a lot of them do not really have the skill to make top quality hip-hop music. But they have the finances to pay the, the top-notch producers, to get in the top-notch studios top-notch marketing, promotion, because everything that encompasses hip-hop today costs money. But I would say, but and, that, that's not going anywhere, so how, and, how, I mean, can, how can you combat that, I guess? Because it ain't going to stop. Like You always going to have D-boys that get in the game, so yeah, they ain't going to stop. It's not going to stop, you know what I mean? And truth be told, it's just like, if we just talking about rap and spitting, then okay, yeah, you know, rap is competitive. And, and you know we can compete in that lane, but if you if you look at the proverbial ladder in hip hop, so to speak, and you take somebody who who doesn't have the budget versus somebody who does, it's kind of hard to compete and getting out in the forefront with somebody. This guy might not be the best rapper, but he has the funds to back up his project. Versus this guy is rap, you know. So it's just like. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? This guy got to do it. Like it sounds like the uh, one, one of them gonna have to hustle a little harder then, or twice as harder. Hey man, you you can hustle hard, and I think for I think for the for the rapper, such as myself who doesn't have like a huge budget, my hustle comes in networking and you know just coming in contact with people who might have. So for so for me, relate building relationships is is bigger than any financial budget right now. Now with that person with the huge budget, it's a it's a lot easier for them, so to speak, to just be like, man, you know, right now I'm about to drop an album. I have two hundred and fifty thousand at my disposal. Why can't this album be every the best it, that it can be? Why can't I put it in the hands of most, a lot of people? You know what I mean? I got $250,000. I can pay for the best videos that's going to look sick. I can pay for the best graphics. I can get the best marketing team. You know what I mean? But the music might not be there, but the package. And that's the thing in rap. You know, you have a lot of guys with a gold nugget inside of a cardboard box. Yeah, presentation. <laughs> right. Mm -hmm. So now like when you I feel like when you at a, at a lower level financially, you have to kind of sit back and study the game. Okay, what can I do to build myself up with uh with limited the leads? Funds, limited with resources. Funds. Right. And so you have to learn marketing tactics and you have to kind of you have to kind of pull from people that you watch. Like, you know, you have to pull from Kanye or J. Cole or Drake. Like, oh, man, um, he put this visual out and he did this. Or, you know, I, I look at, like, TDE. And, man, I love, I think TDE, to me personally, has one of the better, like, best marketing teams right now in rap. Just and that's the way. A, and Top Dog Entertainment? That's what it stands for? Dog, right, right, yeah. Top Dog Entertainment. You know, with Kendrick and... School Boy Q and J Rock and all those like, but if you, I mean, I pay attention. Like, you know, just if 
Schoolboy Q drops a, a record, or J Rock drops a record. They they put out and they put out the, the single artwork and how it looks and you know, we kinda like you gotta kinda watch, you know, the heavy hitters in the yeah, game. Yeah, cause basically, like you said, the people you can you can look at them, the people that have the money and how they doing it, and you can kinda yeah. piggy bank off them. Do a poor do a poor <laughs> man's version. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. But still you can but it, it doesn't have to be cheesy, but you can still do it in a way that looks professional, you know, and official at the same time. It's just all about sitting back and watching the game. Like, you know, if I'm in if I'm in college and I watch Michael Jordan the way he, you know, shot his jumpers where, you know, I'm gonna spot up and work on that same game. So when I do get to the NBA, I'm fully prepared now. I'm ready, I'm ready to go. I, I don't have to say, hold up, wait a minute. Man, let me let me get this. because I understand now that you know within the, within the music industry, whether it be Christian or whatever outside anything else, it's all about being ready, and that's something I learned over time. Like nobody's gonna wait for you to get ready. <laughs> get ready, you know what I'm saying? Like now is the this is your moment. You walk up to me, you say, hey, spit something. I can't be like, well, I ain't ready today. I, I come back, I get back with you. <laughs> Don't work like that, man. And I, I had to learn that. That's something I can say I had to learn the hard way. Like, you want to be a rapper, bro? You want to rap? Rap. <laughs> you have to rap. You, feel, you understand? Like, this is what you're going to have to do. If this is what you want to do, if this is what you this is your dream, then you're gonna have to do it. It's no time to sit back and look like some second rate uh artists approaching this if you want people to take you seriously. You know what I mean? So what are your current projects you got right now? Bro, I just released a mixtape which is entitled The Stephen Darnell Project. And that tape to me it's like kind of metaphor. It's like taking a day in my life. Which the day is a metaphor for my life. So the same span that the, from morning to sunset is birth to me currently right now. Do you have a copy of it with you? Yes, I have okay, a copy. Show, show the show the uh, CD. And you know, talking about that, it's not on me right now. Oh, that, <laughs> but you can't go to. Datpilk.com and um and download it for free. Or if you would like a physical copy. I should I be able to put it in right now though while we said that. So I can edit it and put it in there. So yeah. um I'm gonna say, can you just tell them about um the influence? Cause I like like we was talking about album covers and influences, like what mm -hmm. influenced you to do it like that? Man, honestly, I think it was just a lot of conversations that I was having with, you know, I guess you could say like my big bro, the big brothers in, in my life and the people who I look up to and influence me. And they always come to me and we always like to sit down and have these in-depth conversations about life and how it correlates to hip-hop. And they was just, he was just basically saying, I listen to your music, man. I hear that it's rap, but, but who are you? Right. Who are you? Like, tell your story. People need to know who you are. And it made me sit back and think, like, man, you know, I have a lot to say, but these people don't know it because I really, you know what I mean? I haven't really dove into it. So that's when I sit back, sat back with the name change. It's like, yo, I want to give people me. Like, at the end of the day, forget forget a rap persona, man. Forget all that. Like, I'm me. And I can rap, and I'm going to apply me to that. So I came Stephen Darnell. You know, with the name change, what better way to explain that by releasing the project? That Stephen Darnell project. If you look on the cover, it's like a cartoon, you know, depiction of me. Because every cover I do, I like to really incorporate art. Like I don't really like to just, you know, take a picture and just be on the on the CD cover. Like I feel like. Well, what about that picture behind you, though? That's a poster. That I, <laughs> I just I sign it at, you know what I mean? But you know, when it comes to art, like the action, I feel like everything is just art. And I want the, the album cover to to speak just as much as the music. So I named the Stephen Darnell Project. It starts, the beginning of the project starts with my birth in a delivery room. And then I talk, I have conversations. I have talked about what I went through with my mother and a lot of different family members. 
and I have actual voicemails from these people on the songs that, you know, correlate to that situation and whatnot. So, yeah, man, I performed it, one of the songs today, and every time I perform it, like, people cry, like, I don't, it's a song dedicated to my grandmother on the, on this, on the project, it's entitled 1538. And I perform it, and then there's a voicemail at the end of the song. My grandma just gave me like words of encouragement, and wisdom, and just you know, just joking around. And people are always like touched by that. I think I still get touched by just you know thinking about it. Like I really, I really wasn't trying to think like how can I do this the most creative way. Like I really was just doing it from the heart. I just really wanted to incorporate her into my life, you know, because. I mean, to the music, because that house I grew up in, 1538, I was ashamed of that house. Like, I was embarrassed to invite friends over to the house because it was so, it looked so poor. It was so, it was just raggedy. It was old and dusty compared to the houses that, you know, a lot of my peers lived in. But now I understand it was that house that gave me character. That house made my music what it is today. And my grandmother, she she lived in that house like it was a mansion until she moved into a, a new house. So I took her approach and how she viewed it, and now I applied it to my life. Like just be grateful, man. Be thankful for the things that, that God give you because those things ultimately make you, man. You can have a person have a million dollars in mad jewelry and pull up in the Lamborghini, but they could be empty on the inside, you know, and, and shallow, and, and you could tell. But the people who are difference makers, who make a, a huge impact on the world, they might not have a lot of money, but it's like people will never forget them. Like people enjoy seeing them coming. And that's the type of person I wanna wanna be. I wanna be that person. Like, oh man, Steve coming over, I'm excited. Like, you know what I mean? I wanna be that person people love to see coming rather than, oh man, he I don't wanna be around. You know, I don't wanna be that. And not just being that person that people just want to be around because I, I, I can offer them something. And I know a lot of people in, in, in music or celebrities, I know they feel sad because they, they know that there are some people only around them because of, you know, the situation at hand. And if I lost all this today, will those same people be here, you know? So... Then I got that, so that's the project. That's what it's about. I got another one I'm working on also that I'm about to put out. It's like another mixtape, just promotion, and that one will be entitled "Without a Deal." All right. Yeah. If you had to pick money, fame, or love, which one would you pick? Man, I'm going for the money, dog. Nah, I'm just playing. Nah, I would definitely say love, man. Love conquers all. Love, love, love will help you get those other things. You know what I mean? So if you if you got love, basically that what ha that's what happens when somebody becomes famous. Or if you see an artist whose fan base is growing. They just basically receiving love from people. Think of how many artists, honestly, right really at this point that you can think of whose music is not five star. But their fan base is through the roof. And that's only because people have bought into who they are just as a person. I think people like them more than they like the music. I'm saying, talk about your number one fan. My number one fan? Not like, no, don't count the family and stuff. Like, your real <laughs> number one fan. Oh, oh, like, man, that's, I would definitely say, man. My big homie, man, my brother, man, this guy, um, go by this guy by the name of Patrick Green. Like, when I drop anything, bro, he's gonna hit me up. Like, he gonna sit, he shoot a text, or he gonna call me. It's like, man, yo, you, that's dope, man. You did, you did your thing, on him, man. And but we not only gonna, we not gonna just you know shoot the compliment. Like, we're gonna sit down and actually have a conversation about. Yo, why, so why'd you do that song? Uh, you know, what what was you? Every every conversation is kind of like an interview. Like we chop, but it's like that's like my big brother, man. Like I really look up to dude. Like he's the first one 
that I can, I can honestly say I, I look up to in terms of just being a father, the way he approached um, being a husband. Like, you know, you're around so many influences growing up who tell you that it's cool to do the latter. But now you, as you get older, you start saying that it's cool to, you know, man up and have no responsibility. So I can honestly say, like, when my, when my boy Pat, when I talk with my boy Pat, it's like, man, this is this is who I'm making music for. This is what I have in mind when I'm writing or, or go to the studio. Because Pat OG, he he grew up basically liking the same type of music. And he a hip hop head. He don't rap, but you know he gets it. Even from um, you know like a Christian standpoint and, and following Christ, like I can honestly say, like my conversations. My late night conversations with him really shaped the way I, I even view it now. And the fact that, you know, Jesus was grimy, man. You know, he didn't really he didn't really care about the flash, man. He really just cared about showing love to the downtrodden and outcast. He like, yo, speak from the speak from the perspective of that brother in, in the hood right now with, you know, sacking up dope on the table with the AK off in the corner in the trap house. I'm not a trapper, you know what I mean? But, you know, I grew up in certain environments that were, you know, that were connected to that. And I really do have a heart for for people, man. And I just want to see, I just want to see people live life to the fullest, man. You know, be be a father, man. You know, to your kids, man. Like, have a family, raise your family up, because that's. I feel like that's the biggest attack. The biggest attack right now is on our families. And if our families are broken down, then we can't we can't progress as a people. You know, you understand know what I'm saying? Like, if you watch TV and the the, the depiction of the majority majority's families always. The mother, father, the kids, they live in, in harmony in a, in a nice house. But on the flip side, in, in the black community, the depiction that we have, uh, mom is a single mother in the house that's trying to do her thing. You know what I mean? We're going to drop you off with your dad on the weekends and let, let him have his time and take you back. And now you, you know, it's never like a, a holistic uh, picture of a, how our family should look. So, just going back to say, like, my number one fan, my brother Pat, man, he was, he definitely one of the reasons why I accomplished all that in my music. And he, he helped me take my view from being an artist and kind of broaden it lyrically, you know what I mean? So what would you like to say to all your fans and supporters? I definitely want to just say thank you, man, first and foremost, because I know at the end of the day, not, nothing is obliged to me. Your views, your comments, your encouragement, your compliments. That's I don't deserve that that stuff as an artist. So anytime that anybody takes goes on social media, take time out of the day to share my art, saying that hey, this is top notch art, and, and I I like it. You should like it. You should check it out. Man, I definitely appreciate that. Man, I don't really even have. I really don't even have like the words fully to express how I feel about every time somebody does that. It kind of it kind of like feels a little weird to me sometimes because I can remember times at the offset of me pursuing music when nobody cared at all. Like you know, I probably had like two, three people like it, share it, or you know, actually buy a CD. But when people walk up to you and they actually want to give you some of their hard earned money for your art, man, it's definitely appreciated. It's definitely it's every it's still surreal. It definitely takes you takes you back a little bit. Like yeah, I appreciate it. So I just wanna just say thank you. All right, I wanna say thank you for coming through politics with me. Damn. Damn one time. <laughs> I said you wanna tell me how to hit you up and everything? Yeah man, you know. I got all the social media sites. I got Instagram. That's at Stephen Darnell Art. Twitter, S Darnell Art. But, you know, just an easy way to just encompass all that. If you just go to my website, which is Stephen 
darnellmusic.com, you go in there and then you can see it. it has like a list of all my social media and YouTube videos, anything that's you know encompasses what I'm doing. All right, man. So we about to roll out. Like I said, make sure you check me out on popolitikin.com podcast, the videos, all these interviews will be on YouTube. So go there, popolitikin. Heard yeah, you gonna see. leave us with a freestyle though. What's up? <laughs> oh yeah, I mean, I'm, it's definitely written. I'm going, to, <laughs> but no, I, I wrote it. It's my art. Uh, let's say, Lord, I wanna glorify your name. Thoughts in my brain got me fighting the temptation of fame. Every day I'm stressing. I fiend for material possession that I've never seen as an adolescent. But what you do when mama never had it to spend? Tommy Hill figure got me losing out on my friends. Begged mama for them joints, but she couldn't afford them. Probably best though. Cold bodies land the more if this world cutthroat. Project Grits get stepped on. Crooked government officials ain't fighting the death toll. I'm staring down a barrel of a nine millimeter. Another hashtag for these wicked police. Um, teach to teacher. You See, I'm out of touch. Unemployment line city say I'm out of luck. This ain't Milwaukee, but we trying to make the bucks. Top shelf flow, this is like another notch. Way above the average. Steady rapping, I mastered it. Every time I step into the booth, it's like a massacre. I know the source, though I rhyme, he shine. If we really been frank, I should have signed three times. Mm. Yeah, yeah.